Welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast with author Sarah F. Hathaway and co-host Chen Gibson. Blending survival fiction and fact to bring you entertaining education that will help you dream, survive, and thrive. And now, here's your host, Sarah F. Hathaway and Chen Gibson. Chapter 15 The days in the quarantine passed slowly, but the men felt better every day. Before long, Cole sat staring at the sun's morning rays as they fell softly on the grass. The large tent he occupied with Monroe and Chappie was filled with the noise of people eating. The day had just begun, but the humidity already hung thick in the air. Cole looked down, scooping another pile of eggs off his plate. How about that chick? Chappie whispered to Monroe as a female soldier walked by. Nah, she's too pretty. You know they're too high maintenance. Yeah, you're right, Chappie acquiesced. How about that one? He asked as a homelier woman walked past them. Cole watched General McClintock approach. McClintock put his finger to his lips as he came to rest behind Monroe and Chappie. Sharply clearing his throat, Cole chuckled at Monroe and Chappie as they jumped out of their seats. Good morning, gentlemen, he declared. Chappie fumbled for words, having been startled. He bumbled as he replied, General McClintock, please have a seat, sir. The noise of the chair screeched on the floor as Chappie offered the man his chair. The general sat down and Chappie went to stand behind Cole. Still smiling from the comical events, Cole inquired, How are you this morning, sir? A much happier man since you three have recovered and cleared quarantine, McClintock declared. It feels good to be back on my feet, sir. Thank you, Monroe responded. Cole's look turned solemn as he thought about all the other people that didn't make it. Many weren't as lucky as we were. That's true. And that has a lot to do with your next mission, McClintock assured him. How do you mean, sir? The Northern Governing Board wants to ensure the northern region's borders are secure. They're scared the disease will come from the south again. However, they need the medical trade to continue. I need you to go secure the area. That's too much ground to cover, Cole commented. His face scowled with uncertainty as he listened to the noise of one of the soldiers dropping his tray. McClintock leaned in closer and whispered. The board was discussing walls, Virgis. Walls to divide our country. They wouldn't do that, sir, would they? Cole, we're surviving off food grown on their lands right now. If they decide they want walls, what say do we have? Cole took a deep breath. He feared deeply for his country and wondered where the future would take him. McClintock expected an answer, and Cole had a job to do. Understand, sir. We'll head south and make sure security is tight. Thank you, Virgis, McClintock replied sincerely. He pushed his chair back and shook hands with Monroe and Chappie before leaving. The boys were not far behind him. As they exited the tent, Johnny approached. Hi, Johnny, Cole greeted him warmly. Hello, Mr. Virgis. Pops is sending you out again, isn't he, Johnny wondered. His brown eyes were curious. Cole shot him a scornful look, but took a moment to give directions to Monroe and Chappie before he addressed the young man. Go get us packed and the truck loaded. The men replied affirmatively and headed off. Cole took Johnny over to a stone retaining wall and sat down on it so he could look the young man in the eyes. You shouldn't call your father Pops, Johnny. You're leaving again, aren't you, Johnny insisted, avoiding the scolding. I'm needed on the border to help maintain order there, Cole told him. Are you going to round up more refugees, he wondered. No, we're going to make sure the people of this country have access to the medical supplies they need to fight the sick. Oh, Johnny replied, looking down. I guess they need you more than I do then. Cole smiled at him warmly. I'll be back before you know it. To Cole's surprise, the young man reached up and hugged him tightly. You better, Johnny replied. Cole hugged him back. Hello and welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast. This is episode number 410, season 15, episode 15, uh, hey, Chin, what's up? Hey, Chin's up, y'all. 
And we got a very special guest with us tonight. Rick Austin is here. Hey, Rick, how are you? I'm doing good. So we had a, a fantastic conversation in the green room. Uh, with your permission, I'm going to throw that up for uh, my members to go ahead and listen to some of our martial arts uh, lingo background. I didn't know you were. Back there. I didn't know you're recording me. Uh, oh no! Hey, you know uh, you you're be careful with, the... with those little ones. <laughs> oh man! I yeah. Just, I, good thing I didn't say anything <laughs> off color. <laughs> no, you kept it nice and clean. Just, just the bottom of your foot. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, yeah. I, I'm I'm a good editor. I'm a good editor. What can I say? Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, today's chapter in the in the chapter that played while we were yapping it up is all about, you know, food is kind of power and uh, how, you know, after a, a collapse, the one who's growing the food, providing the food is actually the one with the power. And uh, it's just kind of curious, like Bill Gates is buying a lot of farmland right now. So, uh, you know, is that still ringing true kind of deal? And mm. uh, so I thought you were a perfect fit for this episode and beyond that we got 10 year anniversary of prepper camp coming up so we're gonna just hit it all and just have some fun um sounds good yeah so uh jane i gotta start with jane a little bit she was just great love that she's helping me out with the audio drama i cannot thank her enough for you know being a part of that and uh having her voice on there so you have to give her a big hug after the episode for me yeah, she needs to give me a big hug because I have to leave the house so she can do it. <laughs> she has she has to hold herself up, and of course, and then all the animals can't be making noise either. So it's like I got to go out in. Uh, I think yesterday we were 120 degrees with the with the heat index. Mm. So you know, I got to go outside in in that heat with the animals, and uh, yeah, you, know, you got to keep them out of the barn because we get monitors in the barn. So. Uh, <laughs> So she can do that for you. So you need, I need a hug from you too. All right. All right. I got one of those coming for you at the end of September. There. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a personal question that I don't know the answer to. How did you meet Jane originally? Um, I picked her up in a bar someplace. And she was, <laughs> she was just sloppy, fallen down drunk. No, yeah, <laughs> she, doesn't, right. no, no she doesn't drink. She doesn't drink. Uh, <laughs> It was just one of those uh, things that we were in Orlando, and um, it was, um, well, you know, we kind of met at Disney, and uh, it was, um, it was just interesting. She, she just, she was, I don't know, one of the most honest people I'd met, and, you know, to a fault, and uh, told me lots of things about her in her past that I didn't really want, even want to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Love and uh, it was kind of like, but she just kind of let it all out there and said, you know, this is this is what I am and this is who I am, and and you either you either like it or you don't because I'm tired of dealing with people that that uh, pretend otherwise. So, ah. you know, so it was good. And she didn't she didn't understand any of this um, prepper stuff because she was a shopping maven. And, you know, she was all about hair and makeup and right clothes and shopping all the time. And she was the, the traditional, you know, b oblivious um, person out there, the oblivious sheep. Didn't really pay attention to politics and any of that sort of stuff. You know, what does that have to do with me? And I was, you know, the, absolutely the opposite. I mean, I've been, you know, prepping before they even called it prepping and just just always been kind of a Boy Scout. And... Um, you know, it was the it was it was the 2012 discussion, the Mayan calendar thing, and prepping for who knows what was going to happen, that kind of woke her up and said, "Hmm." So she, you know, she was a researcher in her work in the legal field, and uh, so she just kind of quietly did research and said, "Hey, this guy's this guy knows something. He's got he's so onto something." Maybe, maybe there's something going on here and and you know so over time she's become a you know an even more rabid uh, political animal than me and um you know she's she gets it and we took this venture 15 years ago and jumped off this cliff on the secret mountain of survival um you know we went in face first i mean she didn't she couldn't even cook literally couldn't cook <laughs> i love that you know, to her, the the kitchen was just a place where there were four walls that held up the the roof of the house, <laughs> um, and 
and we, you know, because we all both had corporate jobs and long hours, you know, we just did a lot of eating out because it was easy to do. And there was every restaurant that you'd want to be, you know, in, in the area that we were in. So we were always eating out or getting pizza or whatever. So, um, but when we, um, when we did this and became, you know, full-time homesteaders, it was baptism by fire. She really had to, uh, to learn how to do everything. And all those skills that, uh, that everybody knew 150 years ago, um, yeah. you know, are, were lost. I mean, right. you know, they've been lost for generations. And, you know, now, luckily, there's still an internet, so people can learn stuff from that and, uh, you know, shows like this and um, get themselves more prepared because um, nobody's going to save you but you. Yeah, I was lucky enough to have really cool grandparents and great grandparents that were, um, you know, cognitively there. And I love to share stories with them and just pick their brains and learn about how their life was beforehand. And, well, you know, we always had gardens and things like that. It was never uh, so just country girl. So never really uh, had that. Um, When I hear about couples who are struggling, you know, one's into it and one's not. I always there's a special part of my heart that kind of aches for them because what a challenge that must be, you know, when you can't get your your spouse on board. It's kind of like one believing in Jesus and one not. That's a hard, hard thing to bridge there. Yeah. So, yeah, we've we've had a lot of people that have come as couples to prepper camp and it's I don't have anything to do with it. But, you know, there's invariably the one that really isn't on board ends up being on board and even maybe more enthusiastic than the one that, that, uh, you know, that brought her in typically, typically her bringing her. Um, but you know, when, when the spouse finds out that, Oh, this prepping thing isn't all about guns and ammo. Right. I thought that's what it was. Oh, wait a minute. I thought it was just a bunch of, you know, idiots that were saying the world's going to end and, you know, they're all running around with tinfoil hats. So these are just, it's just normal people, you know, and, and nice normal people and, you know, people with good values. And, oh, I, I can learn how to make cheese. I can learn how to make soap. Oh, you know, and I, I can learn how to cook all this survival food that my husband's trying to get me to keep these stupid beans and rice thing. And I can <laughs> yeah. make it taste good, you know, with this going to this class on, on uh, you know, how to make it a, a food storage feast. So. Um, you know, it's it's been good for individuals and for couples. And I know that Jane always got that question when we first started out is, you know, somebody would show up at prepper camp, it would just be the guy and he'd say, you know, I just can't get my wife on board. How do you get her on board? Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, the homesteading kind of um, aspect yeah. brings, brings them in yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Um, uh, that kind of brings me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch up my questions a little bit. Um, what kind of miracles have you seen along the way? Like you, I have stories of people who, you know, oh, because of you, I was more prepared when this COVID hit. One of my friends only has one mm-hmm. lung, you know, and she's just yeah. a big time liberal, never, you know, um, even considered herself a prepper or anything. And then she started reading my book and it, it sparked that little bit of fire in her. And so I know you've got to have some incredible stories about miracles that you've seen along the way. What's one that like you would pick out is like something that that you knew God had you in the right place? Well, there's there's a lot of them. But, I think um, but let's let's just one that comes to mind that doesn't involve really any other people. But it's it's our first prepper camp. We had um, this severe storm coming, and you know this was our first one, and we we're going, oh man, this looks terrible. It's you know the hail and lightning and everything else, and it's it's headed our way, and we could see the black clouds coming toward us, and lo and behold, it's like the black clouds split in two and went around Prepper Camp, <laughs> and then you could see the you know the lightning and hear the thunder, and it just went around prepper camp and just continued going. And I said to Jane, I think we're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. What a moment. Well, it certainly didn't do that for my first prepper camp. (laughs) That was when we were floating. Um, Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. yeah, You guys were soaking wet. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was the end of my tent there. I left that thing for Ken. I was like, I'm done with this tent. (laughs) 
It's over. <laughs> so why prepper camp? I know the answer, but I want you to, you know, lay it out for everybody because uh, I've been to a lot of events. And uh, so why prepper camp? Um, Jane and I were part of the whole doomsday preppers thing early on. In fact, even before we were on the show, Jane was doing um, what they were calling a tweet chat. So it was kind of a live chat on Twitter uh, with her prepper talk group, which was thousands of people um, who were all watching uh, doomsday preppers at the same time. Okay. So, you know, we were all making comments about it and some of it more snarky than others me particularly you know <laughs> what an idiot you'd never do that this guy's gonna die you know that kind of thing <laughs> um and uh, so she was involved with with the uh, marketing people at at national geographic tv so anyway we went through all of that and i ended up being on on doomsday castle after doomsday preppers season three was over and um because one of the guys who was um who was that whole show Doomsday Castle was all about is somebody who had seen my presentation at another um, at another conference and he bought my books and he says, I want the secret gardener survival at Doomsday Castle. That's going to be our major food source. So I, I need that installed and I would like Rick Austin to come and show us how to do it. So we, um, you know, we did that. And uh, so we were invited to the, the media, um, big blowout before the show aired and you know they brought in all the all the major networks and everything else and brought them in and put them up in a nice hotel in greenville south carolina and then we went out to the place and um, you know we had a chance to talk directly with the producers of the show and um you know my wife said um you know we we just you know you you're you're making people look like idiots um, and I realize that's good television, but you're making people look like idiots. And they're, all the all the preps that you have are people who have major, major money to be able to do these yeah. things. And, you know, you need to do a season where it's normal people using normal amounts of money to come up with creative ways to um, to prep. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after they're agreeing to do that and after we went through months of contract negotiations where basically they would not disparage us make us look like idiots because i used to be in the television business you can do anything you want to yet you can edit anything to make it look like right. something else yeah and um so after that and a a million dollar clause penalty clause if they did that or they gave away our location because what's the sense of having a secret garden of survival if you know two million people know where it is so, um, you know, after that, we were on Doomsday Preppers, the fourth season, the last season, and uh, we get the highest score of, of anybody um, on the show in terms of our preparedness, even though we, there's much more that we could do, and there's much more, way much more than we have done since then. But that's a long way to get around to, you know, we were kind of celebrities in the prepping community. And at that point, there were um, convention centers that were doing this stuff, and they were all promoters who weren't really preppers themselves. They were just trying to make a buck on the latest uh, and greatest craze. Um, so it was all about bringing people in to these convention centers and then, you know, trying to sell stuff through vendors. And what we saw was that people just wanted to learn stuff. So, I mean, these these promoters wanted Jane and I to go all over the country and go to these shows so that we were a marketing draw for right. those shows. Right. And, you know, we would teach a couple of classes and, and we just watched the, the people who were going there just said, well, I don't know what I need and I only have so much money and I can't buy everything. What do, what do I need to buy first and why do I need to buy this and what's it going to do for me? So we said, hey, you know, it's all about education and that's kind of where we came from. So, Jane, myself, and a few other of these speakers that were on the speaking circuit said, you know, we'd like to do a, an event that we would like to go to and in a setting that is conducive to actually practicing and trying out this preparedness stuff, bushcraft stuff, whatever it happened to be. So um, we thought long and hard at it and uh, prayed long and hard on it and ended up inadvertently meeting this couple who were at another conference that we were speaking at. 
and they were looking for baby goats and we just so happened to have some baby goats because we're you know there we're having babies all the time uh-huh. so that we can continue to have milk and um so we ended up going to their location and delivering babies to these people and i never deliver babies people come to me to pick them up i never i never go anywhere but we just did this time i don't know why um and it was right there at the orchard lake campground and the guy you know it, it was off season he said hey um you know i got this campground you want to take a look or you know look a, a ride around so we got on a golf cart and for me, it was like Mr. Toad's wild ride because he was just going faster than I've ever known a golf cart to go and taking <laughs> us everywhere. And, you know, it was the largest campground in that area. And um, I'm going, wow. And I, I, things just started clicking and I'm going, this work. should be a great place to yeah. have this event that we're thinking about. So we spent a year working on it and putting things together and came up with the name Prepper Camp and, you know, trademarked it and did all kinds of other stuff. And then uh, tried to get speakers to uh, to come to the event and set the thing up and sell tickets. And right out of the box, we were the, the largest outdoor preparedness event in the country first year. And um, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was like, I don't think I want to do this again because it was it was pretty intense. Harrowing. Yeah, intense, yeah. you know, just trying to just trying to keep everything. And at that time, we were only having like six classes um an hour right and now we've got now we've got eight an hour and we get 64 classes a day so every single hour you get a new class we get eight new classes going on so um that's insane that's insane yeah it is and and yeah. the technology thing and everything else and um but halfway through the event people kept coming up to me and saying well are, you're gonna have this again next year aren't you we're, you know what's the date gonna be what's the date we're, you know we're gonna have this and i'm like man i don't know you're like asking a, a, you know, a pregnant woman or a woman who just gave birth when she wants to, that, you know, does she want to have another baby? So it was, uh, I said, just give me some time to think about it. So we did. And, um, you know, we ended up having year two and uh, things just get bigger and better. And people come from literally all over the world. Yeah. When I, as you, when as I, you well know, we, your Australian friend came this year yes. this last year so yeah uh, she that was, was pretty so cool. stoked and she was so bummed she's back out on ship this year um Is she's she? so bummed yeah that she's got one more stint at it out at sea and then she's done into retirement so yeah she was super bummed ellen was just crushed but uh yeah. trying to make it happen every way she could because she just had a blast last year so uh yeah yeah, I was trying to get my buddy Doug up in Alaska to come in too. Um, I talked to you a little bit pre season, you know, pre show about um, training with him, and uh, yeah. he's really interested. And then that's one of the things too. When I at first uh, was interviewing Jane and stuff, I was like, eventually I'm going to meet you. And she's like, don't be one of those people who says they're going to come and then never does, you know. So as soon as we yeah. got moved closer, I was like, oh. Now it's just a drive away. So, yeah, happy, happy to come in every year. It's just a blast. Um, there's a there's a lot of people who know each other or knew each other, you know, for a long time on the Internet. Yeah. Um, that never get to meet until they went to prepper camp. And yes. It's like all the all the, uh, you know, the PBN, you know, prepper broadcasting network people, um, you know, James was telling me. We never met each other before we came to prepper camp. We right. never actually physically met each, met each other. And I was like, wow. That's, yeah, it's that's like really our cool. family then, reunion. You know, it's like the one place we get to all congregate and everything. There's going to be so yep. many performers from the audio drama there this year. It's uh, going to be kind of cool. So uh, I'm trying to get <laughs> my other buddy, Doug, who plays TJ out there. We'll see how that goes. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it's exciting. So what kind of new material do we got this year, uh, going on? Cause I know you're always excited to pump up the new, the new stuff we got going. Well, you know, we've got 64 classes a day, so That's we, insane. we try to keep some of the staples that, you know, everybody needs to know. And it's important to understand that there's a lot of new people every single year. I mean, last year, my first class, the first day at nine o'clock in the morning on Friday, I said, um, how many of you did you guys take my class before? Not a lot of people raised their hands. I mean, very few, which is kind of odd because I get a lot of people taking my class more than once because it, there's more information they're trying to get, you know, because they're starting to do their own thing in their own garden. But um, yep. 
So then I said, well, how many of you are first time prepper campers? And 90% of the people, 300 in that class, 90% of them raised their hand. And I'm like, oh, wow. Crap, wow. What, what, ha- what? I said, why? And somebody yelled out, Biden. So, yeah. Like, yeah, I saw so um, yeah. much youth last year, a big, yeah. big turnout from young people. It was really, really mm-hmm. exciting. And uh, maybe some of the people that you would think, well, they're kind of yuppie for prepper camp. But man, they were out there in full force. I was really, really surprised. It was a, yeah. it was definitely um, a different a different demographic rollover um, this this last year, which I was happy about, actually, because, you know, everybody deserves a chance to learn and to understand that, like, Prepper Camp is such a safe place to be. Um, you yep. don't have to worry about, you know, uh, any kind of public image or anything like that. It's just people wanting to be people and learn stuff and, and hang out together. That's what I love about it. Um, yeah, we had, we've had NBC in London want to come. We've had 60 Minutes want to come. We've had uh, ABC um want to be there and you know the the biggest station in france wanted to come to prepper camp and and we have refused every single one of them because he said you're just going to try to make us look stupid and you know we this is this i said to them this is a safe space for preppers and conservatives so no you're not allowed yeah i would Um, say even more of a sacred place honestly it just cannot be it cannot be tarnished because it is beautiful and anybody who you know has the wild hair to just go and experience the event really needs to it's a it's a great place to be um i want to get a little but you were asking me about new oh yeah 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 do the new classes uh, you know so so you know we keep we keep a lot of the staples but I'm always looking for about 20 or so, you know, 20 or more new classes to put in. And unfortunately, you know, we have a lot of great classes over time and it's tough to cut 20. Um, right. But we did and we added 20 more. And, uh, you know, we've got um, an area intelligence class with um, the guy that runs. Um, um, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Um, he, uh, I've been waiting to meet him. Forward He's been observer, on my show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Forward Observer. I've been waiting to yeah. meet him uh, for years. So uh, I'm super stoked he's coming this year. He, yeah, he, he um, in some of the first years, he was there at Prepper Camp right. you know, teaching. And uh, we got an artificial intelligence class because that's pretty topical. And what's the good, the bad, and the ugly about that? Mm-hmm. We got somebody talking about avoiding abduction. Yes. Um so uh, that would be you. Uh, yeah, that's gonna so be that's, a, yeah, that's gonna be a great class. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go through like all the bondage, how to get out of that kind of stuff. A lot of it's really easy to do, so uh, that's gonna be fun. Yep. Um, building a stone oven for cooking and heating. Um, you know, we've got actually one of our executive committee. He built a stone oven. He, he's an engineer, so you know you got to kind of understand this. But you know he can get the the fire up in there for like to like 900 degrees, and it stays warm for days. So um, you know, that's a good thing. To okay. Know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, digital footprint: How to stop from being tracked. Everybody wants to know that. And oh, yeah. in fact, we've got a uh, we've got a vendor this year that's selling non Google phones, and um, you know. The same thing with with computers. So mm. they're kind of ghost computers and ghost phones that you can buy right there at Prepper Camp. So that's kind of cool. Very cool. Brock's uh, looking for a new phone. I'll keep that in mind. I won't definitely yeah. won't buy one before we come. Yeah. And then uh, every prepper needs a home based business. Uh, the faithful prepper, a Christian's perspective on prepping. Um, of course, you know Is, we get uh, call, classes. Who's Fire teaching Star that one? Because that's a book, um, right? Aiden um, Tate. Yeah, yeah. Tate. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I haven't so, met um I haven't met him and I love that book. Uh I've gone oh, through and through that book. Yeah, so that's well, awesome. He sells he sells Jane's in my book at the thing. So he's he's the guy that's at Prepper Press. Um, okay. So he's selling so okay. he's selling the books there. Yep. And he yep. actually wrote so, that one. I did not know that. Yeah, he did. Yep. Okay. He did. Yep. Yeah. Um there out there's Freeze a side drying, story there for you. Silver, ham radio, you know, uh, we got herbal animal care. So, okay. and this is this is being taught by someone who's actually a, a a doctor, not a PhD doctor, but a doctor of of um oh what do they call it? Um 
No, it's it's basically you know, treating with herbs and that sort of. Mm-hmm. Thing. Well, no, it's not. I can't remember. Natu- naturopathic or something like that. Yep, anyway, naturopath. So. Yeah, so, yep. so I've she's done teaching um, shows on that. that. Like, what do you do post collapse when your animals get sick? Just exactly. the same as us. Yeah, exactly. yep. mm-hmm. she's teaching one for humans too. So you know the herbal animal care. Um, we've got uh, uh, how to defend your home being taught by a guy who's a special forces army guy, and you know what better person to teach how to defend your home from intruders. Than somebody who kicks down doors for a living. Yes, um, I love it. Uh, we've got how to build your own e-bike by a guy who, as he says, has spent more wrench time than anybody within 150 miles of, of building electronic bikes, and you know for survival. And um, he does like 72 volt and 32, 36 volt bikes, and they look like motorcycles. I mean, they don't look like bicycles. Uh-huh. Um, so you, just, you know, yeah. talk so you about get like the little bit more of the off-road ability of them. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that yeah. about the e-bikes. Like, yeah, great for a city street. But like if you're going along a train track because nobody else is traveling that way, is that thing really going to be worth anything? Well, these have very aggressive tires and they look, you know, again, they look more like motorcycles than they do, you know, even cool. even mountain bikes. I mean, they just look more like motorcycles. So it's, it's, they're pretty cool. And then... Um, a uh, special thank you for introducing Brad from Five Times August last year. Um, mm-hmm. I We absolutely hit it off. Um, he didn't have a partner in my self-defense class. So I was like, no, no, you're not standing back in the corner. You got to come learn this, you know. Oh, good. And uh, we we hit it off. Don't hurt his don't hurt his fingers. Yeah, no, no. I was I was I was, I was, I was gentle. I was nice. Yeah. Um. <laughs> We, uh, um, I had him on my show afterwards and then he allowed me to use a whole set of his first music that he did in the audio drama. So he has featured just super heavily in the audio drama this year. Uh Yeah. So that's like, he's going to be back this year. I know. I'm Uh, so excited. And then I was, was, I was telling you about that is, you know, after he was here, I mean, he got standing ovation. And so after he was here, I mean, when he was, when he was leaving prepper camp, on Sunday, he said, um, I, I'm coming back next year and I'm bringing my whole family. I mean, yeah. after he heard um, Kevin Shipp, the guy who's the CIA whistleblower, talk about what's really going on in, in the shadow government, he said, you know, I was just blown away. He says, I thought we were prepared. We are nowhere near prepared. So I'm bringing my whole family next year. Whether you, whether you have me play or not, I'm bringing my whole family. So I think that's just cool. And yeah. since that time, He's been literally all over the world and singing yep. at, at these, uh, you know, stop the mandates, anti-vaccine um, conferences. He got, a, he got picked stuff. up on a record contract. Yep. Uh, well, he's he um, even before that, as an independent, uh, he was the number mm-hmm. one singer songwriter album um, on both Apple, iTunes and Amazon. This yep. year. He knocked Taylor so. Swift off the platform, yeah. which was <laughs> Amazing, yeah. That's you know that's that's Jesus knocking off the devil. So, yes, yeah. sir. You are not exactly. wrong. You are not wrong yeah. about that. Yeah, that was fantastic. So I had to like give a special shout out for him and a thank you. And uh, anybody who doesn't know his music definitely has to go check it out. It's fantastic stuff. Oh, and and the videos, the videos are what got me because we were just looking at YouTube and this thing just kind of popped up and I'm going, oh man. Whoever did this video is just unbelievably talented because it is it is slapping libtards in the face. And I'm going, this is just it's just making it so obvious how mm-hmm. stupid and, and idiotic they are in terms of what they're doing. And um, you know, come to find out, he wrote the music for it too, and he did the video. And I'm so he's got a series of videos up, up on his uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, I that, always say uh, he's like uh, the Bob Dylan of our age. You know, like he he's well, the Bob Dylan of our age, in my opinion. I, you know, yeah, but no. <laughs> Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan admits that that he sold his soul to the devil. So I, you well, know, I don't okay, think so. okay, yeah, minus but, any of the devil play. Yeah, that's yeah, very true because he's definitely but, a, a God worthy man. He uh, does a good oh, yeah. job there. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. So and and he's a hero in my eyes because he he shucked everything. I mean, he was he was he had a decent career doing ballads and love songs and that sort of stuff. And yep. he just said, I I you know I have to speak up. I have to do something. I can't I can't just sit back. And so as soon as he started releasing songs that were you know anti-establishment and you know he started getting canceled, uh, he lost at least half of his audience, but. He's gained it all back, and he's you know he's such a, a hero because he's he's done the right thing in spite of you know the potential downside Everything. for him. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's definitely walking the right path, and yeah. uh, a good man, wholesome dude, and uh, yeah. So thank you for that introduction. That was that was great. So, yeah. um, I guess uh, so do we know who the done. keynote yeah. is yet? Do we get not, to release no. that yet? No, we don't no, get to release yet. that. Oh, okay. Okay. We're working on know. it. I won't, We're working on it. I won't pry yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, the thing is, the thing is, I I don't want people to come because of the keynote speaker. I want people to come because they want to go to prepper camp and see the classes. I don't want people who aren't really preparedness minded and interested in learning how to be prepared come to see you know a, a big media celebrity person so love that um, you Keep know it i the kind of space. hold it back yeah mm -hmm. um for that so no, that's and uh back to back to classes um yours truly is teaching in addition to my other three classes i'm teaching rifle setup for predators how not to miss the target and this comes, I was called to do this, um, you know, a voice in the back of my head, which is always God telling me, you got to do this, because I learned so much from having to try to take out predators that were, you know, basically menacing my farm and mm -hmm. all of my, my investment. We have over 120 animals now um, that, uh, you know, I, I learned about optics and about sighting stuff in and about 45 degree red dots and the stuff that you need to do to have the right equipment and thermal night vision stuff, uh, thermal scopes to be able to see a target in the dark or even in the fog in the daylight when you wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm going to show people how to do all that stuff so that, you know, they can protect themselves from the, the four legged and two-legged predators maybe in the future so mm -hmm. yes sir that makes sense wow yeah. you know what there's just going to be too much good stuff we're going to be so oh, yeah. busy this is going to oh, yeah. be sure yeah we're going to be toast by the end of that weekend that's for sure <laughs> i'll just be sleeping all the way home let brock drive <laughs> yeah well <laughs> Just as uh, long as you you've had your coffee in the morning and you're uh, yeah you winding know down in the evening. you don't push yep. me too hard in the morning so that's always preferable yeah know? I'm the yeah. evening girl oh yeah I, yeah, I your pull son night told me. Watch. Your son told me not to. <laughs> she's not, don't don't get in her way before she's had her coffee. <laughs> yeah, you you got you caught me one morning. I had a smile, kind of. It was like yeah, half yeah. cocked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, well, right on, Rick. I'm super excited to get there. Um, we still got tickets for sale? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, easy website if you guys can't find it. Uh, maybe you don't need to be there if you can't find it. Um, obviously, PrepperCamp.com, it's it's pretty easy to find. And uh, then once you, you guys always sell out. So if, if you're still thinking about going, you better get your ticket like right away. Um, and then they usually have some for sale, kind of, they like scalp them after, you know, they're scalping. Tickets. Well, yeah, but not at the <laughs> event. There's, I mean, no, there are people no, that, that for example, there are people that, that have bought tickets and we don't yeah. do refunds, but there is an aftermarket for tickets once we sell out because you just don't know how many times and, and we put this thing out there and tell them that, you know, the, that we're going to sell out of tickets and they better, they better buy now. And then invariably somebody gets sick or they mm -hmm. end up having to, you family know, they can't go because of family whatever. issues yep. or something. Like that. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, there is a, there's a, an aftermarket for, uh, for the tickets afterwards. So we do, do make it easy for people to be able to buy somebody else's tickets and take them. Right. Do and, that exchange. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Then do that exchange. But, yeah. Last year it was crazy. We, you guys, brought a lot of people in. That parking lot was rolling all day oh, yeah. long. So, yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, two thousand people, and it looks like we're going to have two thousand more. So. Um, All right. And that and that's kind of our cutoff because it's just we, too, we want yeah. it to be a quality event. You know, we could probably handle five thousand, but it, you know, we want everybody to have a chair, everybody to have a seat, everybody will see the screen. You know, over the big screen TVs. It's a it's uh, a big know. turnout when like uh, oh, we had one Saturday people for the self defense class. They were bringing like their own chairs up and everything. Mm-hmm. There was so many people there. I was just like, wow, how am I gonna like get the hands on practice? You know, it makes it into a big circle. And uh, yeah, hey, you so, did a great job. Yeah, you did a great job. I mean, I mean, I only get a chance to just kind of fly around and see what's going on. But, you know, everybody had big smiles in your class and yeah. you were uh, you were showing everybody what what to do. So I had to turn uh, the mic on for that class because yeah. <laughs> usually I don't even need a mic. I'm just so loud, you know, mm-hmm. and I had to turn the mic on and Ken comes over and he's like, Sarah, you're teaching like three classes at once right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to turn me down, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, whatever, whatever. So, uh, but no, thanks for coming on. You know, if you need yeah. anything um, before the show, before Prepper Camp, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll do the best I can. You know, we all we all got lots of projects going on, but whatever you need, I'm always here and available for you. So, um, please well, don't I'm, hesitate I'm hoping to that your that your three boys can uh, can help me out. Um, you know, I mean, and help help Jane volunteering and stuff. I, I'm including including Brock in that. Yep. So uh, yeah, you know, you know they always them. do. We're always yeah. down for uh, lending the hand for sure. Always yep. a great event. Set so. up or whatever. So yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll be rolling in probably you know early on Thursday. So whatever you need us for. Good. Yeah. Good. good. Yep. Look forward to seeing you guys and and. Uh, the laundry will always be open. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, luckily, you know, we got the trailer. I was like, I need a bed after those days. You know, all of their long yeah. days. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm showing my age a little bit on that one. I was like, I'm going to spoil myself a little bit. So, well, that's yeah. Good. Yeah. But I'll oh, very much appreciate it. All right, Rick. Well, thank you very much for your time. Guys, if you're interested in coming to Prepper Camp, you need to come. Head on over to PrepperCamp.com. As always, appreciate your time a bunch. I appreciate you, and we thank you for uh, for letting us us be on. Yeah, absolutely. All right, take care. Take care. Thanks. All right, guys, that was Rick with Prepper Camp. We're going to jump into some music, and I'll be right back. That was great. I love talking with Rick. I knew I, I didn't even need any notes for tonight. I knew we'd just dance like it was nobody's business. So, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't too worried about having to dial back in. I figured uh, you, you guys would be able to talk the. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to try and work in some uh, a spot for Chin <laughs> here. You know, that was my biggest concern. And you're like, oh, I fell out. I'm like, well, I'll like... pick you up later. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> love that. Love that. So you guys got some smoking hot weather over there, huh? Well, I mean, we're obviously oh, we're hot, but I'm in Texas. But uh, so it's a, kind of a, a little bit expected, even though it's like like living in hell right now. after but. breakfast it just starts the the furnace just heats up oh yeah wow it's at crazy. least it's after breakfast for you we just stay hot all night long <laughs> it's been kind of miserable yeah. i'm not gonna lie so yeah it's weird yeah but oh well could be worse yeah could be laying face down in it right so ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the news, uh, they're just all lit up, you know. Oh, it's, you know, climate change. All humans' fault. Yeah, yeah, because the planet is just like the stagnant rock that does nothing if we weren't here. Because it's never had an ice age. Or... or, you know, a period of warming. I am so sick of the yeah. arrogant attitude of these humans who think like, oh, right. you know, come on, get a grip, man. Learn what about scares your... me is... It's the science and technology that they're flaunting around now where they could change anything and and the long term effects of right? their little experiments that they're gonna be doing. It just yeah. scares me a bit. Me too. Like we don't know. We don't have that knowledge and you're just gonna like go and change the climate of the earth. We only have yeah. one planet. 
You know, you can't screw this up. Let's like, not, come on. Not, yeah, let's not mess this one up. Yeah. Yeah, Garden Girl's like 106, 107 all this week. I know. My husband works outside. It's a mess. Oh, just, yeah. You oh, said yeah. he had, like, blisters from it. Yeah, his arms are, like, like blistered crow. and stuff. I know, dude. I'm like, you, oh, <gasps> it's a mess. I'm like, you got to wear a long sleeve shirt. He's like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> like... You know, they make sun oh, shirts I, and stuff, right? I have, that's what I have a whole bunch of sun. Sh- yeah. They're, some are just like long sleeve t shirt looking I things. Did, and I did. Some are like, you know, collared, big like fishing shirts. My dad got him these pants from Duluth Trading Company. Now, I, I this is no advertisement them. Of, for them or anything, but these pants um, are wicking, they're durable for working yep. outside. They've really, really helped. So if anybody wants to donate <laughs> some to my husband, um, yeah, they're super those, uh, nice. And yeah, um, those uh, fire hose pants are like tough as nails. Yeah. I um, like them. So th- these ones are like, you know, car- special for the heat. They're not the fire hose ones, but I know. Those oh, ones yeah. Are yeah. Really I know. These are different, but yeah. I've, I've had the, mm-hmm. the fire hose pants tough as nails. And that's what you're kind of worried about, like, how are they going to hold up? But they've been doing really, really good, yeah. and they're definitely worth it. I mean, he used to get, like, all kinds of chafing and stuff because you're just wet. Yep. You're just dripping, you know? And so it's been uh, been uh, sloughing off. <laughs> yeah, the blizzards don't care about the weather. The they have bunkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're just hoping when they come out that, like, enough of, enough of us have died off. They inherit the earth. But guess what? We know how to adapt and overcome. <laughs> so, blooded lizards. Yeah, yeah, they can deal with it. Like our geriatric government, you know, it's just a joke, dude. Yeah. Golly. All right, well, let's jump into some change in Earth news. We already did the uh, the music. We got a CME inbound, uh, likely to hit. Um, well, no one's predicting August first. Uh, Bennett's suspicious observers is talking more like tomorrow. Uh, it was a pretty cool eruption. If you guys get a chance to see it, um, it was like a snake of plasma. And when the when this other CME ejected that like didn't affect us, it caused the whole um, plasma string to dislodge as well. So, you know, we're not like in a direct blow, but it, it wasn't, you know, it's still coming our way. So we're going to keep our eyes on that one. The other thing that I want to draw to attention, we were talking about this in the PBN uh, host chat, um, the Long Valley Caldera. Uh, Eyes on that sucker. This is an area right below Mammoth Mountain uh, in California, and it's actually a super volcano there, the Long Valley Caldera. It's more likely that the Long Valley Long Valley Caldera would erupt than even Yellowstone, because at least Yellowstone has some kind of release. And uh, they're watching a resurgent dome there that's been pushing. Something's definitely pushing up under there. And uh, like I say, the the um, caldera there is 20 miles long, 11 miles wide. And they've been having a lot of uh, wildfires that just spark up there uh, just magically. It's because the ground's so warm. So it's definitely an eyes-on situation to be aware of. Um, there's been lots of predictions by like Nostradamus and stuff that LA would be affected by a volcanic activity. And I've heard people say like, oh, it would be Hawaii erupting and then they'd get the smoke from it. Well, that, that, you know, super volcano sits right there and wait till you guys hear the volcano news today. Oh my gosh. Seriously, crazy stuff going on. All right. So we're going back to the 24th. And uh, we had 360 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, the biggest of which was a 5.1 in the Indian Ocean in uh, by central Java. There was um, Iceland still showing a lot of activity, activity as far as volcanic eruption goes, and Ebico as well. But Suwannee's Jima in Japan also started erupting. So, man, the, the volcano, we got to be on volcano watch right now. Um the, the fire that I was talking about last week in Greece on Rhode Island, 19,000 people had to be evacuated. That 
island literally was on fire. Uh, one of the biggest wildfire evacuations ever that had to take place. Uh, so that was pretty big news as far as that goes. There was also a tornado in Switzerland that touched down. A yeah. hundred, right? Crazy stuff for it to happen there. One person unfortunately lost their life in that event. Um, there was 134 mile an hour winds clocked. Those are the highest winds they've ever seen at the lower elevations. So you know the earth is doing something crazy. There was also another tornado on Pikes Peak in Colorado. Oh, I've been there. Right? So this is up in the mountains. It like, would weigh the freak up right? there. Right? You should not be having tornadoes up there. The tornadoes it's are like, like there's planes. no trees. It's so high. Yes, but they can see that it's touched down. You can see the tree activity. It's just insane. That's so, true. Uh, yeah, another one of those. Uh, 3.8 happened in northern Arizona. Iran was still dealing with dust storms uh, and air pollution impacting 14 providence provinces over there. Um, Nova Scotia was dealing with massive flooding they had. We had talked about that last Sunday. In Afghanistan, they had flooding incident that killed at least 31 people. So prayers go out to everybody that was involved in that. And then Eastern China was also seeing flooding and this landslide killed five people. Three people were still missing as of the 24th. So uh, definitely some crazy weather going on. Um, and the media is more, like I say, more than happy to talk about like how insane it is. And it is. But like we need to look at these causes that are making this happen rather than just, uh, oh, we need to build more lithium mines. That's going to solve everything. You know, that's, that's not going to solve anything, man. So uh, it's pretty gross. Okay. 25th of July, we had 426 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger. We, we increased our earthquake risk to a moderate level that day. The biggest was a 6.0 in the Savvy Sea by Indonesia. Uh, as far as volcanoes, we had the Alaska volcano erupt that day. Shishaldin volcano. Um, there was a 6.0 earthquake in Indonesia. No tsunami warning came after that. And another 5.5 earthquake in southern Turkey. So they're still dealing with the aftermath of that the huge earthquake event they have. They really don't need any more activity there. But you know the plates are just going crazy over there. Italy has been having a really rough go of it this week. Um, near Palermo, they had a wildfire that burned this village up. And uh, they had to close the airport in Sicily because of the wildfire activity. They also had Turkey um, wildfires in Turkey near the resort town of Kamer. And Algeria, they had 34 people, unfortunately, lose their lives as wildfires swept through the country of Algeria as well. The Canadian wildfires still burning, still kicking smoke down at the U.S., but they are losing a serious amount of, uh, of acreage up there. And then in Italy, they had a severe storm in northern Italy, so they've got wildfires burning down south. They've got severe storms going on up north. Two people died in a hailstorm up there. They had golf ball-sized hail in Alberta, Canada. And then a uh, Delta airline that was taken off from um, in Italy when it was over Milan, they got just hammered by hail in the air. They had to reroute and land in Rome because of all the damage to the airplane. So it was pretty intense for that to happen. Um, Europe broke the record for the largest hailstone on record in Europe just one week after breaking the record before this hailstone was eight inches long. I mean, <laughs> it was huge. It's in this person's hand and it's just like massive dude. So if you've got eight inch hail coming down, you better get yourself inside like under a desk or some stuff. You don't know if that's coming through your roof, man. Okay. On the 26th, we had 463 earthquakes, or 2.0 or bigger, biggest of which was a 6.4 in the Coral Sea by Vanatu. As far as significant volcano activity, we had a brand new volcano form in Iceland. Never been there before. 
brand new one forms in Iceland. So you know the earth is up to something. And so you can go online and look at pictures of the baby volcano that has formed there in Iceland. And then to all in the Philippines is also erupting, making a lot of noise out there. Um, the Washington, um, uh, Seattle, Washington airport had to close down for a little bit due to flooding. And in Italy, seven people were killed in that wildfire down south while the violent storm still continued in the north. So like I say, they had a tough week. Um, prayers go out to everybody involved over there. Uh, 6.8 earthquake hit Vanatu. That's an area of the planet that takes a lot of those deep earthquakes. We just Those are significant because they tend to ripple around the world. So a 6.8 hit in there. Um, 2.1 earthquake hit in Illinois. The reason why that one is so important is because it's right by the new Madrid seismic zone. Okay, so we had some crazy stuff going on. Both areas just lighten up. And then uh, Portugal also had a wildfire event. And uh, New York, they had lightning kill one person and injured two others. So some severe lightning events going on. And northern Minnesota also saw baseball-sized hail. So that stuff, man, you better put your hockey helmet on. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> like, it's coming out of the bag. It's going on my head, man. Um, on July 27th, we had 531 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger. So we're still climbing. We saw that solar activity come in. It always gets our world shaken. Uh, the biggest of which was a 5.5 in the Coral Sea near Vanatu. So Vanatu getting hit again. Um, Arizona had a big dust storm that hit Phoenix. And uh, Arizona was get, really getting rocked. We have one of our hosts out there, a couple of our hosts out there. Um, and so we were saying some prayers for them to be all safe. Uh, Michigan, Ohio, Illinois all saw some severe weather with flooding events, hail, a uh, 2.6 earthquake hit San Francisco. So like I say, it hits Vanatu, it starts rumbling around, and uh, San Francisco, not the place you want to be when or the earthquake activity starts. Southern Turkey saw another 5.5 earthquake. And then in Texas, in uh, it was just southwest of Fort Worth. We had a wildfire that destroyed five homes there. It is really hot here right now. So yeah, we're definitely not lighting up any burn piles here right now. In Italy, they had 40 people pass away in that wildfire down south. It's It got really, really extreme. So um, they do need some prayers if you're in the mood to send them out. Manitoba, Canada. Grapefruit size hail with thunderstorms. You know, I should have put more hail into my disasters, in my books. I'm just saying, this stuff is pretty darn hell severe. Hell no. Right? Hell no. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. On the 29th of July, there was 379 earthquakes that were 2.0 or bigger, the biggest of which was um, in the South Atlantic Ocean. I didn't write down what, oh my goodness gracious, I didn't write down what the magnitude is. Probably because it was right by the South Sandwich Islands. That's right. I got so overwhelmed by South Sandwich Islands. <laughs> I forgot the magnitude. Oh, uh, there was flash flooding yeah, in a gold key to that island. <laughs> right? I know. I if I was gonna go no, I guess Ellen would want me to go to Australia. I don't do yeah. islands. So <laughs> I just don't do islands. So I don't know. Um, flash flooding in China and Shashashuan Providence province. I always say province wrong. I'm sorry to all the Canadians who always correct me on it. Province, um, eight inches of rain fell in 24 hours, literally washing the cars like down the road, like, like they're in the torrent of water. It's over the roof of the car, right? Not just like halfway up the car. You know, like over the top of it, water down the road, just all the cars piled up at the bottom. It was insane. In Afghanistan, they had a 4.2 earthquake, and that's really unfortunate. They just had all the flooding. Now they have a 4.2 earthquake with a 7.0 hit Alaska. Um, in New Hampshire, there was a tornado that touched down near Keene. So New Hampshire's not a place that usually gets tornadoes either. 
Um, Ohio, the crops, the soybean crops were severely damaged by a lot of the hail that they picked up there. So uh, there's a lot of things that are have the soy in them. So it's not a good, not a good sign. They finally got those wildfires in Greece under control. So yay, that's awesome. Franklin County, Indiana, one person was dead. One person was missing. There was a cabin that was actually swept away and flooding. Um, I used to think about this when we lived in the manufactured home on the side of the mountain and it would get really raining, you know, and you're just like, oh my gosh, are we going to be just whipped right off this hill? Well, unfortunately, right. yeah, yeah, it happened. So, uh, Tuscan, Arizona, Tuscan, Tuscan. Tucson, Arizona. Um, the monsoon storm came through, left thousands of people without power over there. Um, Ottawa, Canada got hit with a very severe hailstorm as well. That brings us up to today. There was 460 earthquakes that were 2.0 or higher in the last 24 hours, the biggest of which was a 5.6 in the North Pacific Ocean near Guatemala. So we have 94 volcanoes on our list right now that is the most i have ever seen since i began watching volcano numbers you know years ago um 30 actively erupting so we actually went up one there 30 showing minor activity so we actually went up one there as well and 34 showing unrest we did decrease one there that is just a little bit below average as far as the unrest goes but that's because they're all erupting or showing minor activity so definitely something to keep our eyes on uh definitely a mark in history for the change in earth show because that's the most i i followed a lot of um you know uh shows that were talking about earthquake numbers and people thought it was a big deal when we were at 28 so to see 30 there erupting and showing minor activity 94 on our list for our planet that's pretty insane uh that's that's probably our world going into cooling mode you know as far as wildfires in the united states we are at a preparedness level of three that is uh starting to uptick there is 238,000 acres actively burning in the United States from about 57 fires. Six of them are contained. Number one on the list is still New Mexico. Their wildfire situation has grown to 91,678 acres on fire. This is coming from 13 active fires. One of them is new and none of them are contained. Oregon's coming in at not, number two. They've been having a lot of fire activity. They lost some structures this past week. Uh, 37,420 acres. This is coming off of four active fires. None of those are contained. Number three on the list, California's never to be left out of the wildfire situation for the summer. They're up to 33,740 33, acres. 33,740 acres from six, six active fires. This is mostly in Southern California where they're burning right now. And then number four on the list is Arizona coming in at 27,897 acres, 11 active fires. Two of them have been contained. So yeah, volcanoes are the big news of the day. Like, that is serious amount of volcanic eruption. I've I've not seen that before. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Earth knows what she's doing. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's too hot. Okay. You know, one volcano. <laughs> My beer. <laughs> yeah, right. One volcano could like change the climate in, you know, like the Honga Tonga, if that were to serious go. Long Valley Caldera. If that were to go, I mean, you could go from, oh, they say we're in global boiling, I've heard. Global boiling mode. Come on. Seriously, yeah. And that, the Long Valley Caldera could change that in one day, literally. So, guys, you know, take everything with a grain of sand and keep researching because in the grand scheme of things, we don't really know a whole lot about how our planet works. There's still so much more to find out. And uh, like you say, how could we even possibly think about like altering everything when we have no idea what we're even dealing with, you know? 
So China has been really, really interested in the poll change. They've been doing a lot of research there. And a lot of the numbers that um, are legitimate are actually coming out of a lot of the science is actually coming out of China on it because they're not just uh, bought and sold on the whole, um, you know, they have control without using that excuse. So <laughs> they, can, they can do real science. <laughs> Sad, huh? Well, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show today with Rick. That was awesome to have him on. Ten year anniversary. Yeah, I can't wait. To listen to him. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, I was like, I can't ring you up right now. It'll be like, ding, ding, ding. Was, Hold on, Rick. You there, know? Was, there was going to be a loss for content. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Right. Right. Yeah, I was happy that uh, I kind of stumbled him up on my first question there, so that was perfect. I was like, what, <laughs> what question could I ask Rick to like that he couldn't be like super prepared for, you know? So perfect. That's funny. <laughs> you know me. I don't like to poke the bears or anything. Oh, never. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hey, you guys get me in half the trouble that I get into every time. Here, here, Sarah, get on the microphone and call Chin. Uh, Chin? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you guys keep Sarah off the radio? Like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm good for it. <laughs> I get you in trouble. Yeah. I try to keep you out of trouble, Sarah. Uh, that's true. It's true. You're such a good sheepdog. Everybody, it is true. Chin. I got my patch from you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's Ken. It's all Ken's fault. I'm going to blame it on him. He's not here to defend right. himself. <laughs> it's funny. When, when he and I get together, our wives just shake their heads. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, we had a great pre-show as well. Um, so if you want to head on over to changeitearthseries.com. Oh, you were recording? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course I was. <laughs> you know me. Um, if, I do. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a uh, um, a donating member, you know, a, a paid for member, not a free member, you get access to all the green room stuff over there. Definitely, I'm going to have that up there. So uh, check that out. Um, last episode, well, you know, episodes one to four. That's the first block of uh, season three for the Changing Earth audio drama. Season four is going up. So we're going to be looking for a date to do the blooper show, which is going to be so much fun. Uh, I can't wait for the blooper show. Wait till you hear some of the bloopers I have. Just it's so spectacular. <laughs> she says evilly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I definitely won't be playing that on the blooper show. <laughs> wink, wink. Let's see your fingers uncross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're definitely crossed over here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. We'll have that announcement. And, um, yeah, we're just uh, getting ready to to go do some camping and uh, teach some classes and oh. have some fun. So, all right. Can't wait. Yeah, me neither. I'm so excited. So much to do before then. Oh, stress. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and get out of here. Check out everything over at changingearthseries.com. Always a pleasure to have you here listening to the show. Jump into the live chat if you want to uh, get on the live show. And until next time, remember, dream, survive, thrive. Thank you for joining Sarah and Chen for this episode of the Changing Earth Podcast. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Day After Disaster, Without Land, The Walls of Freedom, Battle for the South, Dark Days in Denver, and The Endless Night at www.authorsarahfhathaway.com. If you love the Changing Earth series and podcast, become a supporter while you're there.